Tim, thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, yeah. We're going to talk about the ed tech industry because you, you're working on publishing sure. solutions for education. Right. I've heard that in, in Asia, it's mm -hmm. just as hard as it is in the U.S. to actually sell something in this industry. What are some of the, let's just begin with the challenges. What are some of the challenges you experience in this industry trying to get this product into the hands of people who need it? Well, first of all, you have to get through these, the intermediary who are the teachers and school mm -hmm. principals. And these people have got their education years ago. And so whenever they encounter something new, mm -hmm. they are very skeptical about it because you know, they, they're concerned with the student's growth, but not necessarily through technology. Sure. So our, we have been in this business actually for many years, but from a traditional publishing point of view, we always have to sell through the teachers. Yeah. So without the consent and endorsement, you can't sell anything mm. directly. Does that, does that work with traditional marketing or do you have to do other things to actually get that persuasion going? Well now the, I think the parent power is emerging within the school context. So mm. yes, we do traditional marketing, but we also need to get the endorsement from parents. They mm. kind of know what's going on and um, they can be a big proponent afterwards, but mm. not immediately when the products launch. Sure. And so, just for other entrepreneurs out there who might be doing tech or ed tech, how long should someone assume they need to work on this project in order to get their first sale? I mean, they've made a product, they have something ready to launch. What's the usual sales cycle time for something like this? Well, in fact, I think their first cycle time is actually very quickly because if they don't know anyone <laughs> uh, within a particular establishment, they won't start a project like that. Uh -huh. But it's very difficult for them to push the, for the project onward beyond the initial context that they have because every different school, every different teacher have their own ways of teaching. Mm. So if you have to convince every single teacher this is the way to do it, I think it's very difficult. Mm. So you get a lot of participant in the field, but not a single player that can actually dominate the market mm. because it's just too diverse. Yeah, is there anything that you think, if you could change it by like waving a magic wand, uh -huh. taking the parents part out of it, because we, we know that yes, they have a lot of influence, but in the structure of education, what would take away a lot of those obstacles if you could change it? I think what's one misconception for all the, the creators, the innovators in education is that they are thinking that they provide the best solution for whatever is needed. But in fact, they need to empower the teachers who are not techy. Mm. But for teachers, to, to, that can create a very flexible system that the teachers can use, can understand, um, and then do their own thing. Nice. So that is, I think, the difficulty because traditionally products are branded. So Mm -hmm. Each brand wants to push the products, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you want to promote the teachers, not the brand. Sure. And I'm just really curious, I guess, a last question for you is mm -hmm. that, you know, in the U.S., it's, it's uh, not to make any strong cultural distinction, but I would think that in Asia, it must be very, very difficult to change the rigidity of a curriculum, right? To, mm -hmm. to insert things into it that are uh, sort of counter to what's already in the program. In an optimistic way, I'm just wondering, sort of, what would school look like if tech played a bigger role? And would it be something that would be more beneficial to more people? Or do you think that we would start developing sort of more niche, sort of educational market interests right. for schools? Well, I don't know whether you have an agenda in mind before you ask the question, because we observe. <laughs> I don't. OK, all right, if you don't. <laughs> I don't have any we are, agenda. We are observing a very interesting trend, that is the use of private tutor in education. Uh. Because, you know, in, in maybe 20 years ago, private tutor is a luxury for s some kids, but most of them go to school. Nowadays, you know, you see every student will have private tutor, but not oh, just one, mm. but they may be, you know, just in one subject, let's say English, right? They have a composition private tutor, they have a conversation private tutor, and they have probably the general studies private tutor. Mm. So I think the role of the school is changing. It's a context where students learn how to live with other people, but the actual mm. learning actually takes place with the private tutor. Yeah. And obviously, right, on a one-to-one -one basis, learning is most effective. So I, I see that this trend is emerging in such a way that we have an alternative education program that is done by private tutor on a one-to-one -one basis according or parallel with the curriculum that the school is offering. Wow, that'll be fascinating to see. And thank you for sharing sure. your insight thank you, with Rep. us. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank Great. you.